Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, and thanks for coming. My name is Jian. I work at European Weather Center uh, in Reading. Uh, so I will be talking about the uh, high-performing data retrieval uh, storage, actually, for large and frequently updated data sets. That's mainly weather data, but I will more focus on the uh, uh, weather data on points. So if you would like to get the weather data, in a given point over globally or many points, then that's what exactly what we've designed it for. So the content of my talk will be, a, uh, I will talk a bit about ECMWF, the European Weather Center, and what we do. Uh, and then I will talk a bit about our data uh, and also our graphical products, which is uh, uh, where the system is feeding the data to. Uh, and then I will talk a bit about the point-based products, uh, so it's, you know, the weather data on a given point or many points, and the challenges and the issues we, uh, we get how to do that. Uh, and I will talk about the data structure, uh, how we are holding the weather data to be able to deliver this, and the retrieval mechanism, as well as the future challenges. Yeah. So ECMWF, we had already four presentations during the FOS4G, uh, FOS4G this year, uh, three of them yesterday, and the one of them was in the first day. And we all share more or less the same slide. So if you've seen it already, that will be a repeat. Otherwise, uh, ECMWF is a European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast. It's established in 1975. Uh, it's an intergovernmental organization. So we have 23 member states and 12 cooperating states and nearly 400 staff uh, uh, distributed over three sites over Europe. So our headquarters is in Reading. Uh, this is most of the staff are working at as well. Then we have the Bologna office, which is hosting our supercomputer. It's one of the largest supercomputers in the world because you need big computers to run weather models or climate models. Uh, and then we have an office in Bonn, uh, which mainly hosts uh, our staff working in the European projects. So we are a 24-7 operational service. Uh, we provide 24-7 operational service. So we run uh, operational numerical weather prediction uh, model. We produce data and we deliver this data to our member states, cooperating states and customers. And it's a lot of data. Uh, and, of course, the, our main customers are national weather services uh, from our member states, but also we have private customers as well. And our primary uh, core functionality is to deliver the binary data every day when we run the model. We are also a research institute at the same time because the weather models, they need to be developed continuously, and we have a big research group working on the, uh, uh, the model itself. We have big research group working on the initial conditions because you need an initial condition to run your model. So we, we have a very strong research community uh, at ECMWF as well. So we also operate and uh, uh, provide two EU Copernicus services. This is climate change service, uh, C3S, and the atmosphere uh, monitoring service, which is known as CAMS. So they are also operationally provide data as well as uh, graphical products. We also support Copernicus Emergency Management Service, which is SAMS, and this is done through the EFAS project, the European uh, Flood Alert System. There was a talk yesterday about it as well. And as a new initiative, as part of the Destination Earth, ECMWF is also developing a, a digital twins of the Earth together with ESA. So we have a lot in our hand uh, to shuffle that. So as I said earlier, uh, we run our model four times a day, and then we provide this data to our customers. It's, it's, it's a big amount of data. But we also, as a complementary service, provide lots of graphical products for our customers, but also for general public as well. And when it comes to weather and also to graphical products, there are usually two forms to show that it's either 2D maps, so you have a coverage over uh, part of uh, the world or globally, which shows the weather parameter, how it is distributed and how it uh, changes over uh, forecast time steps, or is uh, provided point-based. So you, you have a point somewhere globally, 
and the users click, and then they receive a diagram showing either the time evolution uh, of the parameter they would like to see, or the vertical structure of the weather parameter uh, for this point. So in this talk, for the rest of the talk, I will more look at the data structures for the point-based data, because now I will talk also about the size of the data to give an idea and why it is a challenge for us. So also the, uh, those graphical products, we provide them through uh, various web applications uh, and also those point-based products, uh, they are part of those web applications. Just quickly mention about those applications. We have uh, an application called EC Charts. Uh, it's an interactive one and it's designed for the expert users. It runs on open layers and then uh, users can zoom and pan or they can add different layers together. They can overlay and change the overlay. They can even do computations on, on demand uh, based on our data. Uh, and that's usually designed for the forecasters. Then of course the, the same infrastructure, we provide the WMS and WFS features. Uh, so we have nearly 300 different layers, all from ECM WFS data of course. Uh, and then uh, most of them, uh, well, almost all of them are available for our registered users and a portion of them are available for general public use as well. Then we have a dashboard, which is simply a portal to collect, uh, to collect different products because users can generate many, many products uh, by combining different parameters together and then uh, the, the dashboard is an easy way to see them all together. Okay. And recently, ECMWF uh, has started a new initiative, Open Data. So up until two years ago, our data was very restricted. But recently, they are quite open. You can access many of ECMWF's parameters as binary data, but also graphically as well. So we have another application, which is called Open Charts, and this is accessible by anyone. So you can go to ECMWF's website, go to Charts section, and you will see hundreds and hundreds of different products. But of course, they, this one doesn't let you to interact because of the load uh, we are worried about. Uh, so it uh, instead uh, has predefined products and predefined areas for those products. So plenty of uh, ways to see the graphical products uh, from ECMWF. And those point-based data, those diagrams, they are all integrated in those applications so users can click to the maps and then they can generate uh, uh, those uh, uh, diagrams. Some data concepts to understand the, uh, the data sizes we are dealing with uh, is that ECMWF is one of the pioneers of running ensemble data. So uh, what is ensemble data? Uh, instead of running one model from a, uh, from a single initial condition, we actually run 50 models every day four times a day, and we generate uh, 50 different outcomes. Uh, it's because the initial conditions are uh, generated from observations from all over the world, but they can go very wrong. And if you start with a wrong initial condition, doesn't matter how good your model is, you will end up with wrong data. So to prevent this or to accommodate that, ECMWF ensemble model changes the initial conditions slightly and try to generate a probabilistic approach as an outcome so that uh, different scenarios uh, can be seen uh, from diff slightly different initial conditions. But that means for the developers like us is that the data size is 50 times more uh, to deal with. Then of course the meteorological weather data, they, they have a time step. Uh, so we have two dimensions of the time steps. It's because we generate Four forecasts a day, we have a base time. So that's what we call the initialization time for the forecast. Then we have what we call the valid time, because every forecast goes up to day 10 or 15 or six weeks, we have different ranges. And we provide weather for every six hourly uh, time steps. So that's an extra 80, 90 uh, uh, times the single data field. Uh, and also the, uh, when we produce the weather data, we produce them on grid points. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's just discrete points on the uh, XYZ space. 
so the, the whole world is covered uh, uh, with those grid points and any user can access to the data at a given grid point. So the, what we call the model resolution is actually how far apart those grid points are and in, in our ensemble system is currently uh, around 18 kilometers. And we have, of course, we need to have a look at the atmosphere vertically as well, and we have 137 vertical levels. So the same grid points are repeated 137 times. So this is more or less the size of the data that we deal every day, four times a day, okay? So just, uh, uh, just to show it at the bottom, the time steps, nearly 80 of them, uh, number of grid points, uh, 18 kilometers apart, so that adds up 1.6 million grid points uh, globally. Ensemble simulations, 50 of them, and we offer two of them as a product out of four runs. So this is more or less the size uh, we are talking about. Of course, we need a system uh, to offer our users uh, those diagrams for any grid point, uh, of the globe and a system that, the, uh, that we can extract any given grid point or grid points out of this jungle of data in a very quick way, okay? So basically, point-based data, we have two types of them. As I mentioned earlier, we have uh, the surface parameters, for example, which has time steps going up to day 10 or day 15. And this is what you see on the left, uh, and this is what we call the metrograms. They just show the time evolution of those 50 different uh, forecasts, usually put as percentile some statistics so that the users can read it uh, uh, in a digestible way. Then we have the ensemble vertical profiles, the one on the right, which is showing the structure of the atmosphere, and we have some shaded areas, as you see, around the lines, which is showing the distribution of those 50 for us. Okay. So how we do that, how we offer those point data out of this big data set, uh, is probably as anyone else do. Uh, we get the data after every run, and we post-process the data because it's not as ready. Uh, although we post-process, most of the time it's not even ready to show either, so we still do some processing on the fly as well. But the standard post-processing, like using uh, two components of the wind to compute the wind speed or wind direction, we can do it in advance, so that's what we do in the post-processing. Then we generate some point data data uh, databases. Uh, that's what I will go into the detail. And then we sync and activate uh, those database files uh, on the web machines. And when the activation time comes, they become available. And our backend at, at the web services can access to those files and extract the data. Okay? Just to give some figure uh, about those point databases, so per run, we generate about 400 gigabyte of uh, point database. So per day, because we have two runs, one in the morning, one in the uh, evening, we generate about 800 gigabyte of data. And we only keep seven days or 10 days, depending on the product uh, uh, archive of this data. So that adds up to uh, seven terabyte of data, which is you know, 800 of gigabyte uh, uh, is written every day and 800 gigabyte is removed because otherwise we will fill up the disks very quickly. And the user's ex expectation is, of course, to access to those diagrams in a second or two. Uh, so one, one example is this diagram here. Uh, it, it shows the 15-day uh, weather data distribution out of this ensemble data. Uh, for various parameters, we have the cloud cover, total precipitation, wind speed, wind direction, uh, and the min max temperatures, for example. And you see those boxes and whiskers as those 50 ensemble members. It just shows the distribution, how the values are distributed over. And we have those shaded areas for each parameter, which is showing the climate. So when you look at this one, uh, the one at the bottom, for example, the reds are the maximum temperature. And we have the boxes showing the forecast from today's forecast. It's actually from yesterday's forecast. And then 
Uh, we have the shaded area, which is showing the climate at that time of the year, looking to the last 20 years data. So we also generate the climate and store uh, every week. So to, to be able to generate this diagram, we need to access 10 of those point databases. That's about 50 gigabyte, uh, just for this specific product. And it requires around 1,500 uh, data values uh, to be able to draw this diagram. So up until very recently, we were using a very uh, kind of a legacy system to be able to store this data uh, for the point data access. Uh, but then we, we, we have more and more requirements building up that we needed to change. And, uh, and some of those requirements are, is that the, our production now needs to be migrated to ECMWS NIV HPC system. So we have a NIV computer, supercomputer. And every legacy code needs to be recompiled. So it's, it's not easy to maintain, because not many people know anymore what exactly the code is doing. And then, you know, the, and it does ancient stuff. It has ancient dependencies. And then it, it's time to change it. So that's for clear. We need something more flexible, more standard data structure, because, again, what we were doing was very ad hoc, very uh, you know, the uh, specific to ECMWF in this case. Uh, we, we needed better uh, performance because it's getting more and more difficult when the data sizes grow uh, to be able to extract the data fast enough. Uh, we also would like to retrieve uh, not the nearest point to the requested point, but many points. So like, like the nearest 500 points with the same efficiency and uh, with the same performance. We also would like the compression op options because the data sizes are growing. So it's uh, better if we can compress uh, and get the same efficiency. Uh, and then extensible as well because the, with the growing data sizes, the, we, we have limits on the disk and other things. More importantly, maybe, especially an operational center like ECMWF, we like simple reproducible uh, workflows and the data containers, like files, basically. Because we, we have a, a group of people maintaining tasks, and then when this task fails, which is generating this file, then they just rerun it, okay? So everything, every step of the workflow has to be reproducible. No room for uh, uh, getting the data, uh, you know, the corrupted or anything has to be recreated. And the simple file structure seems to be the best in our case, fitting for this purpose. So we had a look at some different uh, systems, that how we can store this data. Some uh, databases, which were uh, extremely good in performance. Uh, then the NetCDF, ZAR, and Pi tables like HDF5 uh, were part of this uh, uh, list as well. Uh, and at the end, we start using the Pi tables, which is a, which is a package for managing hierarchical data sets and designed to efficiently and easily cope with extremely large amounts of data. So it's built on top of HDF5 format. It's uh, completely free and open source. It has a very high performance to read and write files. It can do SQL-like operations. Data chunking uh, is there, which is very important. We have compression capabilities and extra tools already coming out of the uh, box to inspect the files that we can generate. And uh, it's, it, will, it simplifies a lot our workflows. So, but the data needs to be prepared. Uh, and for this purpose, we uh, had a look how we can uh, put our data into a table. Because our data comes out of the grip files, so we need to extract those uh, data out of the grip files. And uh, we have many data fields, okay? So we, we have uh, those ensemble members, we have the time steps, so the data fields can grow a lot. And then we have the grid points, which is uh, uh, the same for all those data fields. And then we've decided to put the, uh, the fields in the columns of the tables and then the, uh, uh, the grid points as the rows in the table. And we keep the latitude, longitude pairs in a different table so that we can do some uh, uh, very fast uh, processing. So looking at some ensemble temperature data, uh, we, this is a simple example. It's a single file of 15 gigabyte. 
Uh, we have three tables. The first table has all the data, so it's 50 ensemble simulations, eight forecast time steps, which adds up to 4,000 fields. So we put them as columns in the table, so 4,000 columns. And we have the ensemble resolution of 1.6 million grid points, which adds up to 1.6 million rows. The second data table is, is just for supportive data, uh, which we would like to have. And the third one is the coordinates table. So at the end, we have a data size, uh, which is 15 gigabyte for a single parameter, where we can move around and we can even, uh, on the command line, uh, query. And we spend about five to 10 minutes uh, to generate this data from our uh, original data set. The chunking is, is maybe the most important thing when it comes to the performance. So it basically defines the size and the shape of data section, which is all together on the disk together. So it's very, very important uh, to choose your uh, size and shape for your chunk, because that directly uh, defines the performance uh, of your data retrieval. So in our case, we get all the columns because we want all this data together uh, and we want to store, uh, uh, put like the number of the rows to 500 or 1000, which will at the end uh, add up a very small memory footprint. Can I ask you to shorten it a little bit so we have time for questions as well? Okay, sorry about that, yeah. So the, the retrieval process, on the other hand, is uh, we get the latitude, longitude, parameter, date, and the number of the nearest points. We locate the correct database files. We find the nearest point and extract the data with a single extraction, basically, because we know the index to this, uh, this row, and this is our nearest grid point. Uh, again, the nearest grid point is, is where uh, most of the work goes. So we, need, we get the coordinates from the table, then we compute the distances for the neighboring points, and then this is uh, to the requested location, and this is how we get the index that we can use in the other tables. Okay. Uh, future work, our resolution is going up by four times. That will be 6.4 million data points, so that will be challenging. We also would like to offer not only the graphical products, but also the, uh, the, uh, some kind of data out of those databases. And we are at the moment investigating the data delivery using environmental data retrieval protocol, uh, EDR. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Sorry about the uh, <laughs> overflow. <laughs>